So this is a four-year-old uh, child who presenting with the uh, unilateral nasal obstruction. And uh, these are the provided images. Now, as you can see that uh, here, here, the posterior right nasal cavity here, the posterior right nasal cavity is obstructed and uh, there is a thickening and a medial deviation of the posterior maxilla and the pterygoid plates. So these are the pterygoid plates and here you can see that there is thickening and medial deviation of the posterior maxilla and this is creating a narrow bony opening this is narrowing this bony opening this thickening and medial deviation of the maxilla is basically causing narrowing of this bony opening and which is further obstructed by the soft tissue and uh, on the coronal sequences we can see that there is asymmetry of the palate um, and there is thickened inferior vomer as well the inferior vomer is also thickened so this is a case of uh, unilateral coronal atresia this is a case of unilateral coronal atresia and in the differentials you can add devi deviated nasal septum that is DNS and coronal stenosis. So next is a 25 year old man uh, presenting with the conductive hearing loss one year after trauma, one year after trauma. So as you can see these are the provided images so you can see that uh, here this is the axial temporal bone image and it shows that there is absence of the incus in the epitempinum here. There is absence of the incus uh, with disruption of the intuitomiliolar joint uh, leaving only the head of the malleus visible here. So this is the head of the malleus. Okay, this is the head of the malleus. And... Uh, this is the head of the malleus only and uh, you can see that uh, the incus is deforming the tympanic membrane. This is the incus and it is deforming the tympanic membrane and uh, the incudostepedial joint is intact. A normal appearing uh, stapes suprastructure is present. However, this incus is deforming the tympanic membrane here. So this is a case of dislocation of incus uh, post-trauma. This is a case of dislocation of incus and uh, in the differentials uh, these, these images are quite diagnostic for incus dislocation and other patterns of ossicle disruption include these incudostepedial subluxation or malioincudal uh, subluxation or stapes fracture or malleus fracture. However, uh, this is a typical imaging picture of uh, incus dislocation. Next is a 70 year old man presenting with two months history of uh, anosmia and it's now presenting with the diplopia. So these are the images. Now, as you can see that this is the post contrast T1 weighted MRI and there's a large enhancing mass. This is the large enhancing mass which is spanning the cribriform plate and it is entering the anterior cranial fossa. Also, it is filling uh, the upper sinonasal cavity and it is entering the medial orbit as well. So this mass is relatively, it is hypo-intense on T2-weighted imaging. So this is the T2-weighted MRI, it's quite hypo-intense on T2. And uh, also you can see that uh, there is uh, obstruction of the maxillary sinus here and the sphenoid sinus here. So the sphenoid and the maxillary sinuses are obstructed. So this is a case of olfactory neuroblastoma or esthesio-neuroblastoma and in the differentials you can add squamous cell carcinoma, lymphoma, adenocarcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, melanoma, meningioma, sarcoma, uh, that is rhabdomyosarcoma and metastatic tumor. Next is 18 year old man uh, presenting with epistaxis and uh, these are the images. 
Now you can see that uh, on MRI there is a lobular and uh, homogeneously enhancing here you can see that this mass is homogeneously enhancing in the posterior right nasal cavity and it is extending into the medial aspect of the pterygo palatine fossa which is best uh, seen here on the axial T1 weighted images okay here you can see here that uh, this mass is extending into the medial aspect of the pterygopalatine fossa this is the pterygopalatine fossa this mass is extending into it and uh, on the coronal CT scan you can see that there is uh, erosion into the sphenoid bone here it is eroding the sphenoid bone at the base of the pterygoid plates so at the base of the pterygoid plates this mass is eroding the sphenoid bone so this is a very typical uh, imaging presentation of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma and uh, in the differentials you can put rhabdomyosarcoma squamous cell carcinoma lymphoma inverted papilloma invasive fungal infection and cyanonasal polyp as well another patient uh, 34 year old uh, presenting with vision loss after the accident and this is first patient this is the second patient who is 47 year old with neck pain and dizziness after the chiropractic manipulation and this is the third patient 22 year old presenting with spontaneous neck pain so these are the images now as you can see that uh, here in the patient one in the patient one here you can see that this is the curved reformatted ct angiogram and it is showing the tapered occlusion of the left internal carotid artery okay so you can see that the internal carotid artery is ending in a tapered way this is tapered occlusion this is tapered occlusion of the left internal carotid artery in the second patient, uh, you can see again that this is CT angiogram, axial sequence. And uh, here, there is an intimal flap within the right vertebral artery. So, this is the intimal flap here. In the third patient, uh, which is uh, uh, presenting, we are presenting, uh, we have been presented with T1 weighted MRI fat sat sequence. And in this patient, you can see that uh, there is... Uh, a crescentic here t1 hyper intense intramural hematoma and uh, adjacent to the attenuated left vertebral artery lumen so the left vertebral artery is almost totally attenuated and adjacent to it here we have this t1 hyper intense intramural hematoma so uh, these are uh, post trauma cases of arterial dissection all three of them and uh, their cases of arterial dissection and uh, in the differentials you can of course add atherosclerosis any atherosclerotic disease process with a spasm or vasculitis next is a two-year-old child presenting with fever and torticollis and uh, these are the images now you can see that uh, here there is a retropharyngeal fluid collection here this is the retropharyngeal fluid collection which is exerting a mass effect on the pharynx and uh, this collection has a very faint rim of enhancement okay so this is the faint rim of enhancement that you can see in this collection also mm, here you can see that uh, there is a edema retropharyngeal edema here and uh, this is the edema around this lesion is edema around this lesion and uh, also here you can see that there is a reactive lymphadenopathy is lymph node enlarged lymph node so reactive lymphadeno lymphadenopathy is also shown here this is that lesion with surrounding edema in the sagittal sequence this is that lesion a retropharyngeal fluid collection uh, which is exerting mass effect on the pharynx and there is a faint rim of enhancement along with this uh, edema so this is a case of retropharyngeal abscess 
and uh, in the differentials you can add retropharyngeal edema suppurative lymphadenitis peritonsillar abscess or retropharyngeal uh, neoplasm like especially metastatic squamous cell carcinoma in adults next is the case of a newborn uh, with a lump over the upper nose so the images are provided here this is the um, as you can see that there is a nodular mass along the dorsum and uh, bridge of nose here and uh, this mass is uh, actually it is iso intense to gray matter on t2 and uh, here on t1 weighted uh, mri this is iso intense to gray matter so this mass is iso intense here to gray matter on t1 and uh, on T2 weighted MRI and uh, no CSF or other connection is seen uh, with the intracranial cavity there is no connection of this mass with the intracranial cavity and also on the post contrast uh, sequence we can see that there is no enhancement there is no enhancement within this mass so this is a case of nasal glioma and uh, in the differentials you can add frontoethmoidal uh, cephalocele dermoid or epidermoid cyst hemangioma and nasal polyp if it is intranasal next is 39 year old man presenting with left uh, retro orbital pain and uh, periorbital edema and he has a remote history of closed head injury these are the images provided now as you can see that uh, on the ct scan this is the axial ct scan and it is showing a high attenuation okay this is the high attenuation and uh, rim enhancing rim enhancing extra axial mass in the left anterior cranial fossa this is the coronal reformation and it is showing the mass is in contiguity with the defect in the posterior wall of the left frontal sinus so there is a defect in the posterior wall of the left frontal sinus and this mass is continu in continuation with that defect also uh, there is left frontal lobe in cephalomalacia and uh, left orbital deformity is uh, obviously consistent with the, the old fractures so this there is orbital deformity here is the collection the rim enhancing here is the rim enhancing collection in the left anterior cranial fossa and uh, it is uh, it is high attenuation material so this is consistent with mucosil this is the typical imaging presentation of mucosil and uh, in the differentials you can add pyogenic mucosil or cyanonasal neoplasm or fungal sinusitis next is six year old child presenting with hearing loss in the left ear and uh, these are the images now as you can see that uh, these are uh, 3D T2 weighted MRI sequences and uh, they show that here, here this is the enlarged lymph endolymphatic sac and duct. This is the enlarged endolymphatic sac and duct here. Also there is subtle asymmetry of the uh, modulus which is deficient and uh, this is the MRI on the CT scan you can see that there is a enlarged uh, vestibular aqueduct here okay this is the CT scan which is showing the enlarged vestibular aqueduct and the slightly dilated apical turn here slightly dilated apical turn of the cochlea uh, with deficiency of the modulus so this uh, and however the semicircular canals and the vestibule are normal they are all normal so this is a case of enlarged vestibular aqueduct syndrome and uh, in the differentials you can add incomplete partition type 2 and incomplete partition type 1 this is a case of 15 year girl 15 year old girl presenting with prominent left skull since birth these are the images now you can see that on ct uh, there is a well-defined intraosseous lesion which is involving the left frontal and the parietal bones and it is causing expansion 
of the diploic space. It is expanding the diploic space and uh, internally there is a characteristic uh, triangular pattern to this lesion. On MRI, we can see that this lesion has uh, predominantly high signal intensity on D2 weighted images and uh, the D1 weighted images uh, show that there is extensive fat within this lesion. Okay, there is extensive fat within this lesion on D1 weighted MRI. This is the fat intensity here shown. And on post contrast sequences, we can see that there is heterogeneous enhancement in this lesion. Also, uh, there is uh, an enhancing uh, soft tissue component here to this lesion. This is the enhancing soft tissue component here. And it is uh, accompanying this dural enhancement here. You can see that there is dural enhancement and there is a soft tissue component here enhancing. So this is a case of hemangioma of the calvarium. And, uh, and the differentials, you can add uh, fibrous dysplasia and intraosseous meningioma. Next is 36 year old woman presenting with progressive facial nerve paralysis and uh, these are the images. Now as you can see that uh, there is a sharply marginated here, sharply marginated calcified temporal bone lesion which is arising in the region of the geniculate ganglion and uh, it contains the bone spicules. It contains the bone spicules. And this lesion seems to be involving the cochlea here. So this is the lesion and it is involving the cochlea. So this is a case of venous vascular malformation of the facial nerve that is ossifying hemangioma of the temporal bone. And uh, here, this is a case of ossifying hemangioma of the temporal bone. And in the differentials, you can add uh, meningioma, fibrous dysplasia, and facial nerve schwannoma. Next is 10-year-old girl presenting with the incidental findings on a routine dental x-ray. These are the images. Now you can see that on CT scan uh, here, on CT scan, it shows multiple uh, expensile, expensile cyst-like lesions in the maxilla and mandible here. In the maxilla and mandible here, this is the mandible, this is this expensile cyst-like lesion with smooth borders. This has got smooth borders, okay, here. This is in the maxilla with smooth borders. This is in the mandible here with smooth borders. And uh, the non-contrast CT scan uh, also shows the uh, extensive dural calcifications which are uh, abnormal at this age, these dural calcifications. So this is a case of basal cell nevus syndrome uh, which is also called Gurleen syndrome. And uh, in the differentials, you can add non-syndromic uh, uh, odontogenic keratocyst and dentigerous cyst, uh, melloblastoma, and cherubism. Next is two-year-old boy presenting with periorbital swelling and redness. And uh, these are the cases. Now you can see this is the, these are the images of this case. Now you can see that uh, there's a large here you can see that there is a large enhancing intraorbital mass on the right side which is causing marked proptosis of this region and uh, this mass is uh, actually it is hyper intense on T2 weighted MRI and it is iso intense on T1 weighted MRI and this mass is actually displacing the optic nerve medially okay here you can see that this mass is displacing the optic nerve medially. So this is a case of rhabdomyosarcoma. And uh, in the differentials, you can add uh, optic glioma, lymphoma, metastasis, or Langerhans cell, uh, metastasis of neuroblastoma, and Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Next is 27-year-old woman uh, presenting with decreased vision in the left eye. 
and the pain behind the eye. These are the images. Now you can see that uh, on the coronal T2 weighted MRI sequence, there is a abnormal increased signal here in the substance of the left optic nerve. Okay, here in the substance of the left optic nerve is abnormal com compared to the right side. This region has abnormally in increased signal, hyper intense. And uh, here on the post contrast sequence, we can see that there is a uh, abnormal enhancement of the left optic nerve. Now see this is the left optic nerve, this is the right optic nerve. Compare the enhancements of both of them. This is obviously abnormally enhancing. This is abnormally enhancing compared to the right one. So this is a case of uh, optic neuritis and in the differentials you can add uh, other inflammatory optic nerve diseases like Lyme disease, cephalus, varicella, or sarcoidosis, leukemia, lymphoma, optic nerve glioma, ischemic optic neuropathy, and radiation-induced optic neuropathy. Next is a 86-year-old man presenting with rigors and uh, ear pain. And uh, these are the images. Now you can see that uh, there is a marked soft tissue swelling in the right external auditory canal okay there is marked soft tissue swelling here yes in these images compare both of them now this is the left external auditory canal and this is the right external auditory canal as you can see that there is marked soft tissue swelling here in the right external auditory canal and uh, also you can see that uh, there is a very subtle erosion of the osseous external auditory canal on the right side which is seen on here we can see that on the high resolution temporal bone CT this osseous erosion is quite evident the, the external auditory canal is showing a very subtle erosion of the osseous external auditory canal and also fluid is present here in the right mastoid air cells there's fluid here yeah there's fluid here in the right mastoid air cells so this is a case of uh, a malignant otitis externa and in the differentials you can add neoplasm involving the external auditory canal like squamous cell carcinoma or other skin cancers and mastoiditis with secondary involvement of the external auditory canal. Next is 7 year old boy who is uh, presenting with decreased vision and uh, these are the images. Now you can see that uh, on MRI there is uh, abnormal fusiform enlargement of the left optic nerve also of the optic chiasm and uh, the optic tracts and the intracranial right optic nerve okay the intracranial right optic nerve and uh, the coronal stir image however yeah here the coronal stir image best shows the left optic nerve enlargement. Okay, so this of left optic nerve appears enlarged. This is quite uh, obvious compared to the right side. Compared to the right optic nerve, this left optic nerve is enlarged. It is abnormally enlarged. The fusiform enlargement of this optic nerve as well as the optic chiasm, the optic tracts and the intracranial optic nerve. Also, you can see that on the post contrast sequences, however, there is no enhancement of the optic nerves okay so this is not abnormally enhancing compared to the what we see what we noticed in the other case there's no op, uh, abnormal enhancement here this enhancement is very much like this enhancement so the axial t2 weighted mri here in this case the axial t2 weighted mri of the brain shows the hyper intense signal in the deep cerebellum and the right bones, which is consistent with the hematomatous changes which are common in neurofibromatosis type 1. So basically, this is a case of optic nerve glioma. Okay, this is a case of optic nerve glioma. And uh, in the differentials, you can add optic nerve sheath meningioma and optic neuritis, atypical optic neuritis. Next is 55-year-old man. Uh, with left cheek numbness and uh, these are the images 
and uh, the patient has a history of squamous cell carcinoma of the uh, left cheek removed eight months earlier. So these are the images provided. Now, as you can see that uh, on the T1 weighted MRI coronal sequence, there is abnormal enlargement and enhancement of the uh, left second division of the trigeminal nerve within the foramen rotundum here. And uh, also, uh, you can see that there is soft tissue which is a which is filling a portion of the Meckel cave. Okay, so this this is the soft tissue which is filling the portion of the Meckel cave, and this is that uh, abnormal enlargement and enhancement of the left second division of the trigeminal nerve. So this is a case of perineal perineural spread of the neoplasm that is squamous cell cancer, and uh, in the differentials, you can add nerve sheath tumor and inflammatory neuropathy. Next is five-year-old boy uh, presenting with the leukocoria and strabismus. And these are the images. Now, as you can see that on the axial CT scan, there is a abnormal increased density of the vitreous humor in the right eye with a more focal region uh, of uh, soft tissue attenuation immediately posterior to the lens. So this is the lens, this is the lens and this is that soft tissue attenuation region which is immediately posterior to this lens and uh, this is the increased density compared it, compare it to the left side. So this is vitreous humor on the left side, look at it, it's quite clear and here it has got this uh, hyper attenuating appearance and uh, the abnormal material this is the, the abnormal material it is extending as a band from the posterior lens to the optic nerve head you know here this is extending here this is quite clear evident on this image that uh, this uh, abnormal material is extending as a band from the posterior uh, lens to the optic nerve head okay and uh, also, uh, if you compare it uh, with the size of the left eye, so the right eye is slightly smaller, okay, it is slightly smaller and the anterior chamber is shallow, anterior chamber is shallow, okay, the anterior chamber here, it is shallow compared to the left side. So these findings are also, they are very well seen on this uh, uh, proton density MRI and um, this is a typical case of persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous, PHPV. And uh, in the differentials, you can add uh, uh, retinoblastoma for leukocoria. You can add retinoblastoma, chronic retinal detachment, Coats disease, toxocariasis, and retinopathy of prematurity. Next is 73-year-old man uh, presenting with enlarging anterior neck mass after subtotal uh, thyroidectomy. And uh, these are the images. Now, as you can see that uh, here, there is a very well-defined here enhancing mass, which is extending from the inferior hyoid uh, to the cricothyroid junction here. Okay. This is that abnormally enhancing well-defined mass. And on the sagittal you can, uh, sequence, you can very well show the uh, limitation of this mass. That is, it is extending uh, from the inferior hyoid to the level of the cricothyroid junction. And it is uh, predominantly, here you can see on the coronal sequence, that it's predominantly uh, to the left of the midline. And it is uh, overlying uh, in the strap muscles. Okay, it's overlying the strap muscles. And uh, the thyroid gland is absent here. Okay, in the axial as well, you can see that it is predominantly on the left side, and uh, the thyroid gland is absent here. So, this is a case of ectopic thyroid tissue, and in the differentials, you can add thyroid carcinoma and uh, vascular malformation. And uh, any vascular malformation like hemangioma or venous vascular malformation and thyroid carcinoma in the differential.